So open your Bibles, please, to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter 12, I'll begin reading verse 7. Paul said, Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations that was given to me a thorn in the flesh. The master of Satan above at me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. Amen. Amen. I love that. Ever since I came down with that COVID back three years ago, which nearly killed me. I've had to really anchor down right there. Amen, sir. So it says, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in mine infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Amen. Key verse in our text, of course, is verse 7. Paul said, Unless I should be exalted above major to the abundance of the revelations that was given to me, a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan above at me, Lest I should be exalted above measure. I'm preaching with the help of God this evening on the ministry of the thorn. The ministry of the thorn. I'm going to lead us in a word of prayer. As I pray audibly, would you pray in your heart? Ask God to speak. Ask God to help me to preach. Uh, I have to fight vertigo all the time. If you have COVID real bad, which I did, then you normally have vertigo real bad, and I fight it every day of my life. But God's grace is sufficient. <clears throat> God, our Father, now God in heaven, God, Thank you for the pillars to pray. God, I thank you, Father, to your God who hears and answers prayer. I thank you meant what you said when you said what you did. You said, call unto me, and I will answer thee. Amen. And show the great mighty things which thou knowest not. So our Father, we come call it. Oh, God, so it's great mighty things. I thank you just much God now as you were when you created this whole world. Yes. Thank you, God, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You said, I'm the Lord thy God, I change not. Oh, God, how great, how great. Yes. How good, how awesome thou art. What a mighty God we have. Speak now, God, please yes. help your people here to see it. Continue to bless this dear pastor and his family. And bless this whole church family. Yes. Please, God, give me bread in heaven to feed your people. And Father, we thank you. God, I thank you, God, that your grace is sufficient yes. for whatever our thorn is. Yes. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> The ministry of the thorn. There are a lot of ministries in and through the church. Got preaching, teaching, praying, soul winning, visitation, 
Some churches have a TV ministry, radio ministry, bus ministry, youth ministry. Some churches even have a deaf ministry. But all of these are ministries to others. The thorn is a ministry to me and you. Amen. I'm talking about the ministry of the thorn. I want us to notice six simple thoughts and I'll let you go. We're going to notice Paul's privileges, Paul's peril, Paul's pain, Paul's prayer, Paul's provisions, Paul's praise. We'll give it to you just like God gave it to me back years ago. I preached this message a lot since I came down with that COVID. I hope this will be a blessing to you. Now there's a difference between trials and thorns. Trials come and go. They're more temporary. But thorns are permanent. All Christians have trials. But not all Christians have a thorn. And there's a difference between thorns and chastisement. Chastisement is to get the sin out once it gets in. Yeah, right. But a thorn is to keep the sin from ever getting in. Amen. That's what it was doing for Paul. So I was noticed, first of all, Paul's privileges. Paul was greatly blessed of God. You notice in verse 7, he said, there was given to me an abundance of revelations. Yeah. Paul wrote half the New Testament. Yeah. Right. Right. He had several successful missionary journeys. Yes. He had people saved. He established churches. He ordained elders. No wonder then the Apostle Paul was a candidate for the thorn. Yeah. Because it's so successful. If you're successful at anything, you're, con you're a candidate for the thorn. Yeah. It doesn't just have to be the ministry. No. You could be a successful doctor, dentist, lawyer. You, su you could be a successful nurse. A successful businessman, a banker, farmer. You could be a successful mechanic, a carpenter. And if you are, and you're a good Christian, you love God, then you're a candidate for the thorn That's right. because the devil knows what got him kicked out of heaven as pride, and the devil will try to get you lifted up with pride. So we see something of Paul's privileges. Notice Paul's peril. I just touched on it. He said not once but twice in verse 7, lest I should be exalted above measure. That's pride, folks. Yeah. Pride. Yeah. If the great apostle Paul, whom I believe is the greatest Christian ever lived, yes. was in danger of getting lifted up with pride, then no marvel that you and I are tempted to right. be lifted up with Amen. pride. Amen. You know, I don't know why in the world we have to be so lifted up with pride when the Bible says, Paul said it, what hast thou that thou dost not receive? Yeah. If you got anything worth bragging on, then it didn't originate with you, it came from God. So give God the glory. He said, my glory will I give unto no man. You put your hands on the glory of God, God will back off from you. He's jealous of his glory. He won't share his glory with anybody. Paul 
cause peril. Pride. You know the Bible says pride goes before destruction. Yeah. I want to spit for fall. Yeah. The Bible says God resists the proud, but He giveth grace to the humble. Proverbs chapter six. The Bible says. These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are abominations to God. The first one on the list is a proud look. This glass here. It's a little over half full. I could probably walk back to the fort for a good while. Across this platform without spilling a drop. But fill it up to the rim. You get the message. Yeah. It's hard to carry a full cup without spilling it. That's right. Sure. Sure. Martin Luther, the white man that got saved, came out of the Roman Catholic Church some four or five hundred years ago, made one of the most powerful statements I've ever read or heard in my life. Don't you listen to this. He said, I've often seen God allow preachers and leaders and churches get into the sin of adultery as a judgment upon their sin of pride. I'm going to repeat that because that's powerful. He said, I've often seen God allow preachers and leaders and churches get into the sin of adultery as a judgment upon their sin of pride. God hates pride, yes, folks. He, right, right. he hates my pride, hates your pride, right, hates the devil's pride. Right. God hates pride. Yeah. Next of all, we'll see Paul's pain. He said, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh to make the Satan to buffet me. This is not comparative to the thorns on your rose bush. I mean, you, when you consider all Paul suffering, all Paul went through, I don't think a little thorn like the one on your rose bush is going to cause this man to pray honestly for God to take it away. Oh, no. Oh, no. What this is talking about is talking about a stake. It's talking about a post that's been sharpened on the end. And they would take the victim and impale them on those things. That pointed stake post would go up on a rib cage. And of course it would put the victim to death. Paul said, that's compared to what I am suffering. No wonder Paul was such a great Christian. Yeah. He could suffer all he suffered, never wobble on the axle. And he didn't. Yeah. On one occasion he said that I might finish my course with joy. And he did. He did. Amen. Woo! Amen. He did. Hallelujah. What a Christian. He said, the master of Satan to buffet me. That means to beat the slug with the fist. From the time that God gave Paul the storm, now don't you notice it was a gift. He said in verse 7, the middle of the verse, there was given. Look at that word, given to me a thorn in the flesh. A gift. You have a thorn, your thorn's a gift from God. You read on one occasion where Paul said Satan hindered us. The devil beat on him. He may have knocked him down, but he never knocked him out. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Now your thorn may not be my thorn. My thorn may not be yours. If you do have a thorn, then you're aware of it. If it were not bothersome, it wouldn't be a thorn. And by the way, if you have a thorn, you're better off with it than without it. If you didn't, if you and I didn't have a thorn in the flesh, we may not even be in church this evening. God makes absolutely no mistakes. Never has, never will. So we see something of Paul's pain. See, your thorn may be arthritis. A lot of people have it. Yeah. I've got it bad in my hands. I go to bed every night with some soft gloves on my hand because of pain. That's the honest truth. Hurting right now. Did a lot of hard manual labor when I was coming up. Came up on a farm and, and for years and years I run those old chainsaws when I wasn't preaching. Was cutting trees down, grinding stumps, so more hands is ate up with arthritis. But God's grace is sufficient. Amen. That's what he said. Amen. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Something to shout about. Amen, praise God. Amen. We don't have to throw in the towel and quit. Right. Amen. Paul never quit. Right. He suffered more than all was put together. Yeah. Right. You talk about a man suffered. Look at what it says in the preceding chapter. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning with verse 24, Paul said of the Jews five times, received thy forty stripes, save one. He's beaten with a cat of nine tails five times. Five times. Twice was I beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. You read about that in the book of Acts. He was stoned, left outside the city of Lystra for dead. But you know what that man did? He's talking about a Christian. He got back up and so had me read it in the book of Acts. He went right back into the city of Lystra. Well, if they treated me like that, I'd caught the next Greyhound bus That's and went the opposite direction, I think. Amen. That's right. <laughs> Not the Apostle Paul, he's a great Christian. <clears throat> he said, Thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I've been in the deep, in journeys often, in perils of waters, and perils of robbers. In perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, that's the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness. Look at this word, and painfulness. Talk about Paul's pain. Your thorn of flesh could be. Kidney stones. I've never had one. The claim of things are very, very painful. By the way, I'm going to give you some medical advice while I'm preaching that won't cost you a dime. You go to your doctor, it's going to cost you. But if you've got arthritis, cod liver oil is good for it. I can almost hear somebody saying, I think I'll stick with arthritis. I ain't drinking no cod liver oil. Well, really, it's good for arthritis. You got kidney stones. A man that I know, Hugh Nix over in Georgia, he's probably already deceased by now. He was a great mechanic. He found out he had kidney stones, I mean, just constantly. But he found out drinking eight, uh, I mean, two 
eight ounce glasses of Welch. I don't know why it had to be Welch, but he found out he could drink two eight ounce glasses of Welch grape juice a day and it almost eliminated kidney stones. So maybe some of you need to go buy some Welch grape juice. By the way, it's very obvious what my thorn is. I'm nearly deaf. And that's the truth. Well, I thank God for these hearing aids. Without these hearing aids, I would be living in a silent world. That's how deaf I am. I can take these hearing aids out. I can't make out a word you say unless you get right in front of me and holler. That's how deaf I am. So I thank God for these hearing aids. People talk to me about the, what you call it, cochlear transplant. We looked into that, and due to the kind of a hearing deafness I've got, it won't work for me. So I thank God for these hearing aids. Amen. And I'm not worried about it. I mean, you know, I'm 78 years old, man, 78 years old, way over the hill. <laughs> Praise God. Get to heaven, I'll be able to hear it just as good as you can. Amen. Don't be no arthritis over there neither. Amen. Woo! The best is yet to come, praise Amen. God. Don't you get out of heart? Paul said for me to live as Christ, but to die is gain, not lost, but gain. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Yes. Paul said, I'm in a straight between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is what? Far better. Not Amen. better, far better. Far better. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We do the same. I've got a lot to look forward to. Yes, we do. Amen. 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 We get up there, we're going to walk on the streets of gold. We're going to walk, walk on what they kill one another over down here. Paul's pain. You have a thorn in the flesh, it could be migraine headaches. No doubt some of you have migraine headaches. My pastor has them the worst of anybody I've ever met in my life. Seems like he don't have them as bad as he used to, but he still has them. But I can remember when he had migraine headaches so bad he didn't even have to tell me he had one. I could look in his eyes and, and tell that he had a migraine headache. I mean, he had a bad, bad. That could be your thorn in the flesh, migraine headaches. Your thorn in the flesh could be heart trouble, cancer. Your thorn in the flesh could be a nervous disorder. The thorn of flesh could be depression. That's a big one. Depression. They claim there's over 200 million people. No, I got that wrong. They claim there's over 30 million people in America alone with mental and emotional disorders. We consume some 24 tons of tranquilizers sleeping pills, pills of that nature every day in America alone. Your thorn in the flesh could be diabetes, that's a big one. My brother was a diabetic. Your thorn in the flesh could be a chemical imbalance in the brain or in your blood. And I just touched on a few. Your thorn in the flesh could be that you're crippled. Now let me throw something out before I go any further. If you have a thorn in the flesh that was given to you by God, I'm not talking about a trial, I'm talking about a thorn in the flesh, then no amount of medication 
No doctor, no hospital is going to be able to relieve you of that thorn. Paul carried his thorn to the grave and some of us are going to carry ours to the grave. I mean, I've had people to pray over me and anoint me with oil, praying that God would heal my hearing. <laughs> now, by the way, Benny Hinn ain't anointing me with oil. <laughs> if he did, I'd probably go there before that sun goes down. <clears throat> i never forget back when I first got saved. There's a lady in our church had a sister in Macon, Georgia. I was born and raised about 50 miles south of Macon on the farm down there. And her sister went to church where they had a woman preacher. And her name was Sister Good. And she's supposed to be a faith healer. I've been saved. I didn't know no better. She wanted me to go up there and let that woman lay hands on me and heal my ears. So I went up there and had a healer line. I got in it. I thought maybe this woman can make me heal. I walked up there and she asked me what? I wanted, I said, I can't hold it here. I said, I want my ears to be healed. That woman went, pop, right on my ears. But all she did was knock the dust out of my ears. You say, did she heal you? Well, the obvious is obvious. Can't hear a lick, hardly. No, she didn't heal me. I have no confidence in that crowd. Right. Yeah. I'm not being mean or ugly, but, but right's right and wrong's wrong. Yeah. I'm not going to these faith healers. Right. <clears throat> a lot of people had faith in old Roberts. Well, I want to ask you something. He claimed to be able to heal people and people thought he could. There was a storm hit one of those large tents that they were having a meeting in one time. And some of them center poles, them big old steel poles, injured some of those people. They put every one of them on an ambulance and took them to the hospital. Why didn't he heal them? You send money to them faith healers, you just well throw it in the fire. Next of all, see Paul's prayer. He prayed about it. Yes, he did. Notice what he said. Verse 8, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice that he might depart from me. Notice that word besought, that means to beg. Yeah. And I believe if God would hear anybody's prayers, he'd hear the Apostle Paul's yeah. prayers. Yeah. Yeah. But just reading between the lines, when Paul begged God to take the thorn away, I can just hear God saying, no, no, son, I got something better in mind. Amen. Woo! Yeah. I'm going to give you a thorn. And it's going to make a better Christian out of you than you would have been. Boy, you can't beat God. That's right. <laughs> Abraham said, shout out to God of all the earth, do right. Yes, he'll do right. He can't do wrong. Right, right. He always does right. Hallelujah. But pray about it. God knows to it. The Bible says that Jesus can be touched with the feeding of our infirmity. Yes. You may not know for sure whether you've got a thorn or not to commit it to God in prayer. Yes, right. You know, it was Jesus himself who said, they that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. Jesus said, sick people need a doctor. So if you can get help, get it. But if you have a thorn in the flesh, then you're going to carry that to the grave. 
So I repeat, there's not going not to be any medication. There's not going to be any doctor or hospital that can help you. No. You say, well then, my situation is hopeless. No. That brings me to the next point, Paul's provision. Jesus himself said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Paul, I'm not going to take this thorn away, but I'm going to give you enough grace to rise above it. Yeah. I'm going to give you enough grace to keep on serving me. Yeah. You're going to be better off with it than without it. Yeah. Yes, God's ways are not our ways, but they sure are good. So that, as, I, I, as I've already said, that brings us to Paul's provisions. He said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Right. Not just was, not just going to be, but right now. It is. It is. Amen. And I fight that vertigo all the time, fight it when I'm driving, fight it when I'm preaching. But I'm telling you what I'm finding, God's grace is sufficient. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. People ask me, say, how in the world do you drive with vertigo? I tell them, I say, I pray, and I pray, and I pray. So all I knew, know to do is pray. Yeah. And God's kept me from getting in a wreck, and I've driven thousands of them, a thousand miles, going out here, going to these churches to preach since I came down with all this stuff. But God's kept me from getting in a wreck. Amen. God's running the whole show, folks. Yes. Hallelujah. Woo! He's well able to take care of his business. He's well able to take care of his children. The Bible says our times are in his hands. You stay right with God. You ain't going anywhere until God gets ready for you. We're in good hands. Glory to God. And I'm glad I'm saved. I'm telling you, to God be the glory, but I'm still enjoying the Christian life in spite of all these problems. Amen, brother. <laughs> Yeah. I'm finding his grace is sufficient. <clears throat> Reminds me of two story. This really happened. Years ago there was this man. He had the means, he had the money to afford a Rolls Royce. And we looked it up, a Rolls Royce car. I don't know what they all cost, but we looked up one. It cost $343,000. That's a lot of money. Now, I'm satisfied with my Chevrolet out there. And if you got a Ford, I feel sorry for you. You know the difference between a Ford and a golf ball, don't you? You can drive a golf ball 300 yards. Somebody said them fours must have some beautiful motors because every time you see one, they got the hood up, look at it. Now I'm just cutting up with you. If you got a Ford, you may be better off those than those of us got a Chevrolet, but I doubt it. Why well, this man looked them Rolls Royce cars over, like what he saw. But before he'd commit himself, he thought he'd go home and think about it. And just before he walked out the door, he asked that salesman there. He said, uh, "By the way, how much horsepower does this thing got?" The salesman began to scratch his head. He said, "Sir." I'll look into that. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll wire you tomorrow. I'll let you know. He wired him two words. The words were horsepower adequate. Amen. Amen. They don't know how much horsepower that motor had, but it had enough to cause that car to do what they designed it to do. Amen. And glory to God, there's enough of the grace of God in Jesus to cause you and I to do what God wants us to do. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Thank God we don't have to get discouraged. Yeah. Amen. Shout the victory to this thing over. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Last of all, we see Paul's praise. What was Paul's reactions after the Lord refused to take that thorn away? Notice what he said. When Jesus said in verse 9, my grace is sufficient for thee, in the middle of that verse, Paul said, most gladly therefore. Well, I bear the glory of mine infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Most what? Gladly? Paul, you mean you tell, you mean you're glad you got a thorn in the flesh? Yes, I am. <laughs> and then in verse 10, he said, therefore take pleasure in infirmities. I take pleasure. Paul, you, you mean to tell me that you can take pleasure in all these infirmities and these reproaches, necessities, needs, and persecution, distresses for Christ's sake? Yes, for when I'm weak, I'm strong. Yes. Folks, listen, God's ways are not our ways. Darwin's theory of evolution was the survival of the fittest. This book teaches the survival of the weakest. <laughs> yeah, amen. Woo! Yeah, I love that. That gives me a chance. Yeah. I mean, I'm just so comfortable boy raised between the cotton rows and the water mountain patch in South Georgia. I didn't even pass when I was going to school. They just promoted me. They want to get rid of me. Hey, get this fellow. Send him on up to another grade. We've had enough of him. God's strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul said that. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 1. God's not chosen many mighty. Not chosen many wise. Many noble. Says he's chosen the weak things. Yes. Read the book of Judges and notice over and over how God used weak things, weak things. Amen. I repeat, I, I rejoice over this because it gives me a chance. Amen. Gives us all a chance. See the great evangelist, D.L. Moody, who shook America with one hand and England with the other hand, said this. He said, most of us are too big for God to use us but none of us are too small. Amen. I love that. I love that. Amen. The great missionary of China, J. Hudson Taylor, who was mightily used of God to open up the interior of China to the gospel, he said this. He very humbly said, God chose me because I was weak enough. So you might say, well, I'm, I'm just so weak. I, I'm just a nobody. Well, the strength is made perfect in weakness. Right. So get your head up. Yeah. I'm through preaching. Would you stand? You've been so attentive. It's been a joy to be here. Thank you, preacher, for letting me come. I have a word of prayer with you. Some of you may want to come to the altar while I'm praying. I encourage you to come. You don't want to try to bear that burden alone. We need the same thing Paul had for his thorn, grace. Amen. Grace. Amen. So I would have prayed with you. Father, thank you, God, that you promised us that your grace is sufficient. Father, I can't thank you enough. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Precious Jesus, sweet Jesus. You know, the best thing ever happened to us, that will happen to us. I thank you, your grace is sufficient. Father, you know, those people are here this evening, they're suffering, they're in pain. God, would you please have mercy upon them and help them? Your grace was sufficient for Paul, and I think your grace will be sufficient for those here this evening that are suffering, that are in pain, that are hurting. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, that you can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Amen. Thank for love that will not let us go. Thank for the love of Christ that passeth knowledge. Jesus' name, I beg you now, God. 
Pai Rap. 